Hello, so um, I'm Zach. Um, I'm obviously a self-taught MUA here in the UK. Um, I've been on Instagram for about a year and a half properly. Um, I thought it was finally time to start a YouTube channel, um, which is Zach.makeup. So my Instagram profile is the exact same username as that. Um, I saw a picture um, on Instagram recently um, of this look here. Um, and I just thought it was absolutely stunning. And I thought I have, have, have to recreate it. So this is kind of my attempt and my version of it um, using the Beauty Bay Nikki Tutorials palette. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. This is just a, a kind of taster, a kind of quick dip into the, dipping my toes into YouTube, um, just seeing what happens. So yeah, catch you on the flip side and yeah, thank you very much. Hello, so um, I've just zoomed you in a little bit. So um, obviously I think you've seen the intro because I'm gonna film the intro after this. If you can't tell, this is the first time I'm filming with the intention to upload. So like, I will apologize profusely if this isn't great. Um, I saw basically this um, image on Instagram. I hope you can, see, I don't know how well you can see that. Um, but I saw this pop on my Instagram feed and I quite honestly died. I was like, that's probably one of the prettiest looks I've ever seen. Um, just this really, really kind of um, bright, but also pastel orange with this blown out blue on the outer corner. I just thought it was absolutely stunning. And that like gorgeous shimmery, almost like rose gold pink in the center, just stunning. Um, this is by, I'll link that Instagram handle down below because I, I cannot, cannot for the life of me pronounce that name. Um, yeah, actually I follow them on Instagram. They are absolutely sublime. Would so recommend them. I think that stuff's absolutely work. Their work, rather, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so the first palette I thought of um, when I saw that image was the Nikki Tutorials Beauty Bay palette. Um, just because we have that really, really insanely kind of rich blue here, but then also that really, really pigmented kind of pastel, um, pastel kind of mandarin orange at the top. Um, so I think we're probably gonna be using this mainly. Um, I have brought out my Carnival 3 palette just in case I need to deepen anything up a little bit more, um, just because I think the shade Mango will be pretty useful um, and also this blue right here, which I think will be quite useful. But as I say, I would rather use the Beauty Bay one for today, just because I've not used it in a while. Um, and then I am also um, probably going to grab for something from my big indie palette as well. Um, so this is basically my big Adept Cosmetics palette full of singles um, that I've collected from different indie brands. Um, I'm probably gonna do a video on all of these because these have taken quite a long time to collect. My collection isn't as massive as everybody else's on YouTube, it seems, but I think mine's quite, I think it's decent and I think it's quite well curated. So yeah, so we're probably gonna pull something shiny out of there. Um, so I've just zoomed you in a little bit um, and I'm just gonna prime really quickly using the MAC Paint Pot. Um, this is in Soft Ochre. Um, I really, really like this paint pot. Um, it's funny because I, I lost it for a while um, and I usually will typically use something like the P. Louise base, the Beauty Bay base, that kind of thing. That kind of um, wet concealer kind of base. Um, but I find that with the MAC Paint Pot, I find that shadows don't stick unevenly on it because it's not quite as wet, um, which is something I really, really, really appreciate. Um, so I just apply it with my finger and then just blend it out really roughly with a with a beauty blender, nothing too crazy. Um, so I'm just going to grab a Spectrum A12 brush. So it's just a really small kind of, um, small fluffy blending brush. And it's just because I want to be quite precise with this look. Um, and I am gonna go straight in with the outer corner and I'm gonna start with that shade Amsterdam, which is that really, really beautiful kind of um, deep blue. Um, so I'm just picking it up on my brush. Um, because you can see I've got quite a lot on that, so just tapping a bit of that off. And then all I'm gonna do, I hope you can see that properly, is focus that on the outer corner and I'm just pressing it into my lash line. Um, 
gradually picking up more product as and when I need it. And then all I'm gonna start doing is really slowly and lightly bringing that up just into this outer portion, this kind of outer third quarter um, of the crease, just to give my eye a little bit of shape. And I'm just gonna pack a little bit more of that blue on. Um, I really enjoy this palette. I know it's not had the, the best of reviews, but I really get on well with it. Um, I would say that the shadows themselves don't build on themselves quite as, as well as other shadows in my collection. But in terms of like one shadow looks and just simple two-tone looks, I think it's absolutely a stunning palette. Um, and I do really like Beauty Bay's eyeshadow formula as well. I have done for years now. Um, and then all I'm going to really do is just start slowly buffing out the edges of that because I want it to form quite a natural and just not that there's anything natural about blue but like a a seamless transition and gradient into something else. Um, I don't actually work with transition shades. I know a lot of people will and a lot of people will think I'm not doing makeup properly. Um, I find that transition shades just get in the way. Um, I think sometimes they can be useful depending on the look. Like if I'm doing a really dark, like black smoky eye, I think a, a transition shade is really useful. But with colours, I just think they 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 meddle with what I'm trying to do. So I'd rather just take my time blending, um, and being careful with where I place product. Um, so as you can see, I think that's blended really, really seamlessly. Um, I will zoom you in. Uh, am I going to zoom you in? I'm really trying to get used to filming. Um, it's Evidently not my forte. I thought I'd be so much better at it than I am. <laughs> um, so I'm just packing a little bit more product on just to get the kind of um, vibrance from that shadow that I want. And then all I'm going to do is reach for a fluffy blender brush. This is just a Odin's Odin's Eye um, fluffy blending brush that I got from their mystery um, parcel. And I'm literally there's no product on here whatsoever. I'm just buffing out the edges of that, like so, just to soften it up a little bit. Um, I don't really want it to be too blended, um, because I think this looks quite, it looks quite graphic in a way, um, that's the intention. It's kind of like a graphic eye, but softened. Um, which is, I think, why I, I loved it so much. And also the colour combo that they used was just absolutely stunning. So all I'm going to do is just take that off, what, whatever product's left on my brush off on the back of my hand, and then just keep buffing those edges. Awesome. I'm quite happy with that. And I can always kind of fiddle with it later on. So again, I'm just taking whatever product's on that off the back, on off onto the back of my hand, and we're gonna go in with that really bright orange shade, which is called Redemption. Um, this is a really, really special shadow, in my opinion. I don't own a shade quite like this um, in any of my other palettes. And I, my palette collection is a joke. I'm thinking about doing a video at some point, going through them, which are my favorites, which aren't. Um, but I think this tone is just really special because it's so light and bright at the same time. Um, so all I'm going to do is just start in my inner corner and blow that up ever so slightly. I will say with this shade it does need building up, it's not the most opaque of shadows but because of the tone of it, for me it's, it's, it's worth any kind of struggle you have. And then I'm just bringing it in ever slightly onto the lid as well. And then with kind of as I'm buffing and as less products is left on my brush, I'm just going to start really lightly blending upwards into like the diagonal of where my kind of crease sits. Um, going a little bit higher than the blue, honestly. Um, it's kind of following that line a little higher up. Um, but then I'm going to focus the majority of the colour in here. See that's, although that colour is beautiful and that's the, the tone I want, I kind of want a little bit more depth right here so I am going to go in really quickly with the Carnival 3 palette and I'm just going to take Mango 
um, just to kind of just give it a little bit more vibrance. That's all. Because um, I do really want this look to kind of pop. There we go. See, it's not really changed the tone of it too much. It's just added a little more depth, which is exactly what I wanted. Okay, actually, I'm really happy with that. I don't really want to change too much about that shape. Um, I'm just taking that um, Uden's Eye Blending Lushy brush again um, and just softening that line a little bit. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks really pretty. Um, okay, awesome. So I have a couple of options. I could easily take Roxy Catan from the um, Nikki Tutorials palette. Now my hand is covered in blue. Um, but that kind of like rose gold pink, but I think it might have too much pink in it for this look. Um, so what I am going to do is go into my indie um, shadow palette. By the way, this palette from Adept Cosmetics is probably one of my favorite things I've ever bought. Um, I absolutely adore it. it was, it's like massive. Um, but as you say, I, feel <laughs> I filled it quite well. Um, I think I want to go in with this shade, which is by the Pastel Roses, um, who are a UK-based indie brand. And then, funnily enough, when I started my um, Instagram profile up prop and started kind of actually trying with it, um, they were one of the first brands that ever contacted me and they gave me kind of a discount code for myself to go and try out some of the products. And they've just been really sweet to me. Um, but this is the shade Rose Satin. Um, and these shadows are insane. Um, like probably one of my favorite formulas ever. But look at the shine on that. And they're really affordable as well. I think their shadows are around like the five, six pound mark. Um, yeah, this is insane. It looks very silver on camera actually. Whereas in person, it's a lot more like a like a true it's not a rose gold but it kind of is like the more elevated version of that it's definitely a pink but with like a really really beautiful golden yellow shift um it's just stunning so i'm gonna kind of apply that all over the lid i'm just gonna go in with my finger because i think it's easier um so i'm just taking that on my finger really lightly and i'm just pressing it into the center of the lid just to kind of make a bridge between those two colours. Um, I'm not trying to be too precise, this isn't a really structured look, I kind of want it to be more blown out and just more kind of, um, I was going to say ethereal looking, I kind of know what I mean by that. But Okay, many apologies for that, <laughs> my camera just stopped recording by itself which was uber helpful so I just started a little bit on the other eye while I was waiting to figure out what happened. Um, I don't think you missed too much to be completely honest, so all I did was just apply rose satin all over the lid. Um, and then I did just off camera, just take the tiniest bit of Roxy Catan, um, just on the very edge, just to kind of make it just a touch, touch, touch more pink. Um, so all I'm gonna do now is go ahead, finish the other eye, which I've <laughs> now started, um, and then go and add liner, lashes. I think I'm gonna add a um, yellow liner in my waterline, so I'll let you know which one I used um, once I've used it. But yeah, I'll be back in a second. Um, so all I did was just add like the smallest pair of lashes in the world just to kind of, just accentuate that kind of cat eye shape that we've got going on. Um, but I didn't want to take away from the look. Um, and also I always tend to go for a smaller lash anyway because I do have really small eyes. Um, so I went in with these from Prima Lashes. These are the D22 um, lashes, but I halved them. Um, so they are pretty, pretty small. Um, and I just use the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Um, honestly, not my favourite at all. I just use it for Instagram looks and stuff like that because it does flake on me horrifically. Um, and then I also use the LA Girl Shockwaves the liner. I can't actually remember what this one's called. Oh, Ice Creaming. Um, I've used this so much. Like, this was at least double the size. Um, it's just the most punchy, like, yellow liner I've ever found. Um, I need to need to buy another one of those because I've never found anything that I like quite as much. Um, sorry, I'm just like bending down to throw things on the floor. Um, so we're going to get into skin. So I've, I've already put all my skincare on, I've toned, moisturised, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm just going to start with a primer. So I'm actually going to use the e.l.f. 
um, poreless putty primer. Um, this is actually my third one of these. I absolutely adore this product. I own the um, the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer, and this is beautiful, and I use this for best, because I do think this is still better. I think this is probably one of the best primers I've ever found. However, the e.l.f. one, for the price point, is insanely good, um, and it's one of the very few primers out there that I think actually helps the longevity of my makeup, but also the way it sits, and also how it feels in my pores. I am a guy, um, I identify as male, um, and also biologically, I am a guy. Um, I have really, really quite big pores. It's changed a lot over the years. They look a lot better than they did a few years ago. But I'm, it's something I have to take into account when I do my makeup. And I feel like this really does help. So I literally just dip my finger in there and I apply it straight to those areas. So my T-zone, my nose, these areas, and then a little bit on my forehead as well. Um, and it looks like I'm using a lot of products. And that's, whoa. Um, and that's actually, I just dropped the lid and I have no idea where that went. One second. Where has that gone? Okay, honestly, it's like actually completely, completely disappeared and now I'm ruining my background. Do you know what? I'm never filming again. This is it. Where is it? I sounded so camp then. Um. Aha! Found it. That was like the most stressful experience of my entire existence. <sighs> I've wiped my hands. Am I even in focus anymore? Oh, we're gonna roll with it. Um, so <laughs> after that, I'm just gonna take my fingers and I'm just gonna start working that into the skin. Um, like so, and I like to kind of circular motions um, just to kind of get the product spread. Um, and then all I will do is just press over those areas. And I feel like that really helps the primer to kind of sit over the pores smoothly. And it's the way I get the best kind of result with it. Um, so that's that. And then I always prime twice. I always do. Um, and I have to use my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is like about here and it's stressing me out because I need to buy another one and like I use this quite honestly pretty much every day and every time I do my makeup. Um, so it does come on a doe for I am in the shade 2 light, although I think they've released a 2.5 which is a bit more yellow, um, which I think will be more, more fitting. So I just apply this quite liberally to the high points of my face to my nose, a little bit on the forehead, and my chin. Um, this, although yes, it's not technically a primer, it's not a foundation, it's this kind of illuminating hybrid with a little bit of coverage. And I, for me, my skin never looks quite as healthy without this product on. Um, so it's probably one of my favorite products of all time. It just gives me that natural, dewy, glossy finish without being sticky, because it does dry down. Um, it's just stunning and I'm just taking my IT Cosmetics Complexion Perfection brush just to buff that in really quickly. Um, just trying to be careful to avoid that shadow because I don't want to mess that up. Um, can you see the amount of gloss and just dew that's given my skin? God, I love the stuff. Awesome, so that's all blended. God, I literally, I could live in that. Um, and I do actually wear it quite a lot on no makeup, makeup days. Um, just a little bit of this with a little bit of concealer and I'm good to go. Um, yeah, I absolutely adore it. So I'm gonna be going in with the KVD Good Apple Foundation. Um, I actually bought this the minute I saw the, well, the minute it was available to buy in the UK, I bought it on that, um, on that day. Um, so it was a little bit just before the kind of big TikTok craze, but the reason I wanted this so much was because I was just upset. When they said it was gonna be matte, I think I was pretty sure it wasn't going to be. I was like, I don't understand how a product like this, that's balmy, that melts, can possibly be that. And also I questioned whether it'd be full coverage, because typically I will always go for something sheer and dewy. 
so I was like this could this is perfect but it is actually really full coverage this is the shade medium 030 which is actually too deep for me and um, so I'm gonna have to mix something over the top of it um, this will be perfect in summer but because of COVID um, I've not tanned nearly as much as I usually do like this is the palest I've ever been um, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of that on my finger and just dot it over the skin um, just to avoid applying too much product I find that when I apply too much of this that's when I don't like it but if I use a small amount and work up with it it's probably one of my most favorite foundations ever um, longevity wise it's it's not the most long wearing foundation in the world I'll be completely honest it's quite glossy it's quite dewy um, but god I love the finish of it so I'm just going to take that same brush and just really quickly buff that into the skin there's going to be so many well I can just imagine people clocking me and thinking like god he really thinks that's his shade doesn't he like I promise no I know it's not but believe it or not in a couple weeks when we're actually allowed to go outside a little bit more imagine this will be my perfect shade so I'm just dragging that down the neck as well um, but yeah you can see the coverage that I've managed to get is really nice but you can still see my skin through it like I can still see breakouts that I've got I can still see acne scarring but I quite like my skin to look like skin um, I don't necessarily want to cover it I just want to even it out and just kind of show it to be the best it can be as opposed to just applying full coverage everywhere and being on my way um, and also I think I've seen quite a few reviews on this after I bought it um, and I think a lot of people kind of don't get on with it but when I see people applying it with this like thick brush all the way down my face I think well of course you don't like it because you're applying like so much product um, and that's not to say people are wrong and that people you know have to like this that's not what I'm saying um, I'm just trying to say that I think when used sheerer it's a lot nicer but it is very glowy and very almost um, almost oily feeling um, but I, I really like that because it is just really glossy really really just uh, just has a nice finish I just love the finish of it um, but as I say I do have to lighten that up a little bit so I'm just going to take a little bit of my Misha BB cream this is in the shade number 13 bright beige this is so pale on me um, like it's pasty um, just applying this all over but yeah, you, you can see how pale that is. Christ. Um, but yeah, I once tried it, just saw it, and it was just turned out to not be my shade whatsoever. So I'm just dusting that all over, including the neck. Um, and actually I've been mixing these quite a bit recently, um, and they look really nice together. Um, because the Misha, the Misha BB cream has like a really, really beautiful luminous finish to it. Um, which I really appreciate and it does just lighten that foundation up just a touch um, it's nothing too crazy it's nothing intense um, just makes it sit a little bit better god that looks so much better doesn't it filming takes so much longer than I thought it would as well I'm just gonna throw it out there I thought it'd be like 20 minute job no I've been filming for like just this section for 10 minutes and I've only done foundation primer and bloody second foundation okay awesome so like I think that looks beautiful I really really do like the way that sits on the skin so then I am gonna go in with my Fenty Beauty matchstick in Mocha and um, this is one of my favorite contour products because it's 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 warm but not too warm where I don't get a contour from it. Um, so I really like it. I just apply this straight to my cheekbone, honestly. I usually use my Chanel Healthy Glow Bronzer um, cream, but I don't know, I want to change it up a little bit today. So I'm just applying this around the perimeter of my face, a little bit on the jawline. I know this is like age old, Instagram, but I do quite like it because I do have quite a quite a sharp jawline. Um, 
I'm so one of the veins of my existence. Because if I over contour, contour, if I over contour it, stopped filming again. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah, if I over contour it, it can be a little bit problematic um, because it makes me look a little bit dead, <laughs> which we're trying to avoid. Um, so I am going to blend that out with. Okay, so I'm going to um, blend this out with my Spectrum B01 brush, which is a really good foundation brush actually. Um, and using a bigger, fatter brush like this will stop it from looking too harsh. Hopefully, he says. Just drag that down my neck a little bit. And then just blending this out. And I do, especially because this base is already quite dewy and quite, quite um, glossy, I find that the Fenty Matchstick does just blend beautifully. Um, so just start stamping that out. And I mean, you, hopefully you can see how that's kind of blending just really seamlessly into that foundation giving me a little bit of structure but not too much. Um, I love it, I really really do love the matchsticks from Fenty, I think they're beautiful. And I have a sneaking suspicion that they might discontinue them because they released the cream product. And I have a couple of the cream blushes and I love those but I do really like the matchsticks. Um, and I like, the, I've tried the cream bronzer like on my hand that they released but I've not had them like, on my face. And I don't think I like them quite as much. I think they're, they're a little balmy, and usually that's something I'd really like, but I don't know, I think the matchsticks just blend so easily and just see, I mean, like, I can't see where that stops and where the foundation, I mean, I can, obviously, because I can see a shadow, but it's just a bit more seamless than quite a lot of cream bronzers I've used. I love it, I think it's so good. I'm just gonna take my foundation brush and just work around the edges of that just to make sure it's, blended in well. So then I'm going to take this, which is, <laughs> I'm going to use this as cream blush, but it's not cream blush. This is one of the Revlon Kiss Cloud Blotted Lip Colours, um, and it's in the shade Orange Meringue. I love an orange blush, and I bought this as a lip tint, and I, I didn't like it on my lips, but then I tried it on my cheeks, and like absolutely fell in love with it, so much so that I bought my mum one and was like, you need to try this because it's it's called orange meringue and obviously you think it's going to be more orange but it's not massively orange it looks quite natural um like a natural flush it's so pretty um so i do want something more orange eventually but that's why i'll top why i will top this with a powder later on um but just blends so well like i love it so pretty Taking some of my nose just because I do like that like <laughs> sunburned white boy look. So now I'm going to take some concealer, I think. We're gonna do the Maybelline Instant Anti-Age Eraser. I've only just started using this. Um, it's took me so long to try it, but I finally understand the hype. I do think this is really nice. Again, I just try to use a little bit of product. Um, he says that looks quite a lot, doesn't it? So I'm just applying that under my eyes, kind of just cutting this a little bit, not too much, I'm not taking it too high. Just wanna make sure that I'm giving my face a little bit of shape before we go in with powders later. So I'm just taking my foundation brush to sort this bit first. My chin, here. And it just helps lift everything on my face just a little bit by doing this, especially when apply my blush and bronzer up. Um, I find that this just helps to kind of frame my face in a way I enjoy. And then I'm just gonna take my beauty blender and blend that out under my eyes. Um, I didn't state actually earlier, but I always do my eyes first pretty much because I find that it's just so much easier um, to get a shape that I want when I do this. Um, but I'm really, really happy with that base so far. So I'm gonna go in with the in fact, no I'm not. I'm going to go in with a little bit of liquid highlight, I think. This is the Zoeva Liquid Light Drops in Brilliance. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and apply a little bit of this to the back of my hand. Rub it in with my finger. And just pick a little bit of that up. And just add that. Because I'm all about the gloss. Um, and I will as well go in in a minute 
with quite a bit of powder. Um, but because I am so oily and I've added all these dewy products, when I powder, it's not gonna kind of um, take away completely from that dewy glossiness that we've worked so hard to create. Um, it's just gonna kind of lock it in. You'll still still see that radiance underneath, which is exactly what I want. So then I'm gonna take the Fenty Beauty um, Pro Filter Loose Powder. This is in the shade Butter. Um, to begin with, I thought I hated this. I was like, this is absolutely grotesque. I don't want it. But actually, I think I really enjoy it. I just have to use quite a sparing amount because it is really matte. Um, so I'm just making sure that any creases on my under eyes are gone. Dipping in with my Real Techniques setting brush, just taking a little bit of powder, dusting it off, and then setting my under eyes first, and that concealer. Just to make sure that it doesn't move, and also just to smooth any areas out, I'm just going to take some of that powder on my the areas where my pores are the most enlarged, so right here, and also the sides of my nose. <coughs> God, I hate the smell of this powder though. It doesn't smell very strong, I think it's just because it's so um, finely milled, it does kind of get everywhere. Um, but yeah, just like that. And then I'm just going to take my Spectrum A00 brush, which is just a big dense powder brush, and just powder everywhere. Um, and you will see, obviously, this does really dull down the colour of the cream bronzer and the cream, cream blush, um, but I will be topping them. I just think that everything sits so much better once I've already put creams down. Um, it's just the way I do my makeup, the way I enjoy it. So I'm not going to contour today, because again, I don't want this look to be too structured, but what I am going to do is take my Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH02 brush, which is this big, fluffy, fat bronzer brush, one of the best investments I ever made. And then this is my Fenty Beauty bronzer in Private Island. These are really buildable. Um, when I first started swatching them in store, I was kind of like, these don't pick up, these don't swatch at all. Um, but actually I've come to really appreciate that because I feel like I struggle to go too far with it, um, which I really appreciate. Um, this is the Kilowatt Foil Duo in Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset by Fenty Beauty. I use this so much, it's an absolute joke. Like, how it, it doesn't look that touched. Like, you can see I've used the orange a lot more, but how this looks so well put together, I have no idea, because I use this so often. It's, it's, it's a joke. So I'm just taking my PCC3 by Peaches and Cream. This is my favorite blush brush ever. Um, and I'm just going into the orange and I'm just gonna start applying that to my cheeks. So I'm just taking that, I've tapped it off on my brush and I'm taking that on my temples first and then dragging down. That looks really harsh so far, but just wait because I will blend that in um, in a second. So don't, don't worry about that being super, super ridiculous looking. Um, I am aware. <laughs> And also, I think, do you know what, when blush is this strong, I do think it gives more of an editorial vibe anyway, which I really appreciate personally. And I'm just taking it on the tip of my nose as well. And then I'm going to dip a little bit into the pink um, side and just keep that a little bit higher and a little bit more to the temples and then gradually work that down. And the, th the reason I love this so much is these technically aren't blushes, they're highlights. So they give this gorgeous glossy finish to the skin without being too much, which I absolutely adore. So then I'm just going to take my powder brush and I'm literally just going to stamp over it just to blend that in, which I think looks, I think that looks lovely. Um, that is really, really orange. So I want to actually add a little bit of something different in, especially because we've got that pink on the lid. So I'm gonna go in with my MAC Extra Dimension Blush. This is from the Black Cherry Collection that just released. Um, this is Room to Bloom, which I've been using a lot recently. I think it's really pretty. Um, I'm gonna actually take some different brush. I'm gonna take this on a Spectrum A05 um, blush brush and I'm just really lightly tapping it off on the back of my hand 
and then just adding it to the cheek just for a little bit of a pinky flush of colour like so and then a bit on the, a bit on the nose as well um, I'm going to take my um, Tarte Park Avenue Princess Chisel Palette and I'm just going to dip in with a couple of these shades um, just with that Real Techniques setting brush that I used and I'm just going to carve underneath where I put that bronzer and blush just again to make this look just a, a tiny bit more structured without making it heavily contoured um, and then I'm just going to take that fluffy powder brush powder brush and just buff that in straight away then as the next step I'm going to be going in with a highlight um, these are probably my favourite products on God's Earth these are the Dominique Cosmetics Skin Glosses um, the one I always use is Glossed Peach, which is this one, which you can see the amount of pan in there. Um, this is just like a, a glossy balm that you put over your foundation. You can put it underneath, but I don't feel like it works quite as well. Um, this doesn't disturb powder even slightly, and it's the only way that I found a highlight sits on my face, which is a powder on top of this, and it sits as smoothly and as easily as a cream does. It's just... It's just phenomenal. But I don't think we're going to go in with Goss Peach today. I think we're going to go in with this one, which I've also hit pan in, but nowhere near as much. This is Sunset Glow, which does have more of a pink kind of um, base to it with a golden flip. And all I do is just take this on my finger and just really lightly press that where I want it. So on the tip of my nose and the bridge of my nose, my cupid's bow, my chin, and my, the tops of my cheekbones. I mean, can you see that? Oh, I love it. And then do the same on this side. And then all I'm gonna do is take that sponge and just sponge and blend that in. And for me, that is just this seamless, creamy glow, even though we've powdered as much as we have, which I, I just really appreciate, I love that. Um, but then I do always top um, any kind of cream highlight that I do. I just it's just what I like to do. So I'm actually going with this back this by Mac. This is the Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Soul Glow, which was from the holiday collection this year, I believe. I don't know if it's a single normally, but it's just this really really beautiful. Um, I say pale gold. It's not that pale, but it does work really well on my skin tone. So I'm just going in my PC17 brush, which is my Peaches and Cream. Picking a little bit of that product off, tapping it off, and then just highlighting right over where we placed that Dominique Cosmetics Skin Gloss. And I really like to buff my highlight in over quite a big area, because again, if we haven't realised by now, I'm an oily, oily skin boy who loves a glossy cheek. Um, so I'm going to do fake freckles as well. Um, so I'm actually going to take my Lottie London Freckle Tint. This is like my favourite freckle tint in the world. I absolutely adore this. Um, so it comes on like a wand like this. And all of a sudden I'm just going to lightly tap a couple freckles on. I go really heavy handed with these. I'm fully aware. Um, I know you're probably supposed to use a lot less. But I just, I like them. Just leave me alone. Um... Just apply them like that, leave them for just a couple of seconds and then take your damp beauty blender and literally sponge over them and it disperses them because it picks itself up on the product on the um, sponge and that way they just look a bit more natural. But, oh god, I love them. I just, I just think they make everything look so much more summery um, and also just a bit more editorial. And I'm just going to pop a couple on my nose. I'm going to just grab my Nikki Tutorials palette. Um, and I'm just going to go back in with that blue shade on the same brush I applied it with um, and just really lightly run that underneath the eye on the outer corner like so I don't want to blow it out too much honestly um, but I do just want to connect it just so it doesn't look too odd like so that's pretty I don't know if I want to put that orange on the inner corner though 
I'll take a little bit of the orange, the redemption shade from Nikki Tutorials, and I'll just lightly press it in there. I don't want to do too much of it because I think it might detract. So then, all we need to do is a lip, and I've just grabbed my Uden's Eye Matte Lip Stain, and this is in the shade Red Apple. Um, these are the most beautiful formula for a lip tint in the world. So they are just like a really, really pigmented liquid lip formula, but they almost feel really silicone-y, like they have a lot of slip. So when they dry down, they almost feel powdery. Um, so all I will do is I've already got a bit of foundation on my lips anyway. I'll just take this on the center of my lip, like so, and then I will just purse my lips together and just keep doing that. And then I'll take my finger and just really lightly blot that out. Like so. And then the final thing I'm going to do is just take a clear gloss. I'm going to take the Too Faced Lip Injection, um, one of my favourite clear glosses ever, and just top that. Like so. So all that's left to do is just set my face. So I'm going to take my Fenty Beauty What It Do setting spray. This is actually my second bottle. I can't explain how much I love this stuff. Um, I'd say that that's enough because this is a really dewy spray and also I've obviously got a lot of dewy products on already. But like, I just think it gives me such a lovely shine. So yeah, that is the finished look. Um, I really, really like this. I really, really like the way it's come out. It's obviously very different to the image I showed you. Um, because I don't think it's nearly as structured, it's a lot more blown out, it's a lot more simple. Um, but I think it fits the kind of work that I do a little bit more. Um, and also, I'm going to be completely honest, I'm nowhere near as talented as he was, so <laughs> this is what we're going with. Um, but yeah, I think it's really nice, I'm really, really happy with it, and I love the lip tint. And as I say, this, this base I've been really enjoying recently. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I realise this is a little bit all over the place and I promise they will get better. I just need to try and find my feet a little bit more. But um, thanks for watching. Um, consider liking and subscribing. Not that you have any reason to on this video at all. But um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in my next one.